Welcome, guys. Um, in this lecture, I want to discuss the group one elements of the periodic table. Remember, we said a group is a vertical column seen on the periodic table, right? And elements in the same group are put there because they have the same number of outermost electrons, right? So now the periodic table has eight groups in one category. Category means the periodic table has group A and group B. So group A, we have eight of them, and B, the B category, we also have eight groups of them. So now let's discuss the A group, and then we'll move to the B group later on. Now of the periodic table for the, group, for the category A, like I said, we have eight groups, ranging from groups one to zero. So we have one, two, three, four, five, group six, group seven, and group zero, which is group eight. Now, each of these groups will be discussed individually. We'll see the elements belonging to those groups and see some of the reactions they can undergo. We're starting with group one, which happens to be the first of the eight groups. Group one elements are called the lithium family. They're so called because lithium is the first member of the group. Now, what we do in predictable is we pick the first element in that group and we name the group after the, that element. So if lithium is the first member of the group, of which it is for group one, we call group one the lithium family. And the same thing applies to all other groups. The first member of that group happens to be the name of the family. Now, but most times we do not see the group called the lithium family, all right, because we found an alternative name which is most frequently used compared to the lithium family. And what is this name? The name it is, they are called the alkali metals. Group 1 elements are also called alkali metals. And why are they called alkali metals? They are so called because um, group 1 elements react with cold water. And uh, upon reaction with water, they give us an alkali and a liberate hydrogen gas. So this reaction distinguishes them from every other member of the periodic table. They react with cold water to produce an alkali and a liberate hydrogen gas. All right, we said they are also called lithium family. It's important to note that if you look into the periodic table, the, the first member you see in group one is hydrogen, right? But then we don't call that group the hydrogen family. The reason is because hydrogen is not a typical member of group one. The first typical member of group one is lithium. And the reason hydrogen is not a typical member is because it doesn't follow most of the properties of group one. Group one elements are metals. Hydrogen is not a metal. It is a non-metal. Group 1 elements are solids. Hydrogen is not a solid. It is gaseous, right? Group 1 elements, the fact that they are solids tell us that they have their density, they have um, their shape, and several other factors which hydrogen does not have. So why then do we put hydrogen in a group 1 family? Hydrogen is put in a group 1 family because just like every other member of group 1, it has one outermost electron. And for that reason, all right, it is put in group one, just for simplicity reasons, so that it fits into the group. But I'm here to argue that hydrogen can fit into three successful groups of the periodic table, three of them. Number one is group one, and why would you put it in group one? Because it has one outermost electron. Which other two groups can hydrogen fit into? Hydrogen can fit into the group four of the periodic table. You know why? Because group four members of the periodic table have partially filled outermost electrons. So the group four elements have four outermost electrons, and they need eight. So they have just half filled outermost electrons. The same thing happens for hydrogen. The first shell of hydrogen should contain two electrons, maximally. But hydrogen has one, which means it has just half of the original amount it should have. Hence, we can put hydrogen in a group four element based on that argument. And hydrogen can also be put in group seven, because members of group seven um, have seven outermost electrons, which means that they require just one more electron to have a stable duplet or octet structure. So every member of group seven wants to accept one electron to attain stability, like the noble gases. Hydrogen needs one more electron also to attain its own stability, its duplet structure. It needs two electrons in its outermost shell, but it has one. So it means that if we had one more electron to an atom of hydrogen, the outermost electron of hydrogen would be stable. So based on that argument, hydrogen also can be put in group seven. So hydrogen can be put in three groups, groups one, groups four, and group seven. 
That's it. So that's why when we mention group one of the periodic table, we usually do not mention hydrogen because it's not a typical group one element. It is only put there for simplicity reasons. Now let's talk about the other members of group one. We said lithium is the first, and that is why we call the family the lithium family. But apart from lithium, what other members do we have in this group? Lithium is the first, symbolized as Li, right? We have sodium as next, symbolized as Na, right? We have potassium, symbolized as K. We have rubidium, symbolized as Rb. We have cesium, symbolized as Cs. And we have francium, symbolized as Fr. Although there is a newly discovered element called on untrum, on untrum, but all these are they are found in the lanthanides and actinides, which we will still discuss. So henceforth, we will discuss the major elements in the group and talk about their properties. I'm going back now and talk about their properties, right? So what are the general properties? Of course, now pardon me for not saying this. When we mention a group, we will take just a brief introduction. And in that same lecture, we'll take the characteristic of the group, all right? So what are the characteristics of group one? What are their physical pro properties or physical characteristics? And what are their chemical characteristics? The physical characteristics, we'll talk about their appearance, we'll talk about their density, we'll talk about their rigidity, all right? And whether or not they're malleable, ductile, or sonorous, as the case may be. Now, the appearance of group one elements, all group one elements are soft silvery white solid they're soft silvery white solid which means that they have a silvery appearance and are soft so you don't see the group one elements as hard metals as you should expect right they are they are very soft and you could even cut them with a knife all right they have a very low density because they are soft they're not rigid right so they have a very very low density and um, they are not malleable, they are not ductile, means you can't beat them into shapes, you can't draw them into wires. They are very soft. You, only, you can only do that with hard metals. All right, so that's the physical property. 